Hello everyone, the day has come. Guess who has returned? That is right, the queen of pop, Madonna, has returned from four years off to begin releasing music from her 14th studio record titled Madam X. Boy, we got a lot of information in a small amount of time suddenly about this 14th album. So I'm going to process some of that, but I do want to talk about the new single that she has just dropped, Medellin, featuring Colombian pop superstar Maluma. Uh, this is the first track on the record and the first song we are getting to hear from it. I must say, first of all, there are two album covers that have been floating around the interwebs. One is very good and one is... Uh, a little bit lackluster, I'll just say. It looks very fan-made. It doesn't look very professional. Um, uh, I could sort of see where she was going with that cover, but apparently that is the deluxe edition cover, and the standard edition, which has 13 songs, is the much stronger, much more aesthetically pleasing, the much more visually captivating cover, which is a uh, dark-haired Madam X character, which influences from the uh, Fado art style in, Portu in Portugal. Um, and as well as Frida Kahlo and her mother and all these other kind of uh, female icons um, are being kind of molded together into creating this persona of Madam X. And to talk about Medellin, the lead single, you have to understand the sort of concept of this record, I think, to fully get it. And I think I sort of understand. She hasn't really talked yet too much about this song. I'm very eager to see the music video, which will be coming next week. Um, this lead single is a trippy tropical haze of a song. It's actually five minutes long. When I first heard it, I didn't look at the song length and I was like, I, I was so certain the song was going to end after she does the first cha-cha breakdown and then, uh, or it was just going to wrap up pretty quickly, but it goes on for like another minute and there's like another verse. And I was like, oh my gosh, this song is actually like quite long, which actually I find kind of refreshing. Refreshing. Maybe I've been listening to too many short Eurovision songs lately. So that three minutes is something I'm just like very used to kind of songs adhering to and they feel over really fast. So hearing like a five minute song actually doesn't feel too long. Uh, and uh, I think it's quite welcome. You wouldn't want to go much longer than that, but uh, looking at you, Justin Timberlake, he tends to do that. But with Medellin, we get a tropical, as I said, Latin-infused bilingual track, a lot of Spanish. Madonna even sings in Spanish. Obviously, Colombian artist Maluma sings in Spanish, uh, raps in Spanish. Now, there's a lot of people on the fence about this track, so I'm going to try and be you know, kind of objective here. I, at first when I heard it, I was like, oh, this is really interesting. This is like a really edgy kind of left field experimental, as I said, kind of psychedelic song. I don't know why it feels psychedelic to me. Maybe it's just that opening lyric of, I took a pill and I had a dream. And then you took me to Medellin, except she says Medellin. For anyone who's confused, Medellin is a, uh, is a city in Colombia. I think it actually is where Maluma is from, which would make sense. Uh, she's sort of collaborating with him and he's taking her to his hometown, showing her the sights. And uh, it's a bit of a sex tryst kind of thing. That's what it definitely feels like. And I'll get into the concept, like I said, of this record and how I think it fits in a second. But I do want to just talk about the song's construction. Um, the opening lyric definitely sort of sets that palette. And there is something spaced out about the verses that do feel like where a lot of people are directing criticism. Verses do feel a little hollow. There is a lot of auto-tune on her voice. I'm afraid. I don't know what to say. It's It's been so long since Madonna has fully let herself shine without such processed vocals that I just don't expect her to really bring back that facade anytime soon, at least especially not on a lead single, one that, you know, is featuring a reggaeton Latin pop artist who uh, I'm sure she's trying to, if not target the American mainstream radio market, she's definitely aiming for the Latin mainstream radio market. So the auto-tune is just part and parcel of the package. And I got to be honest, I don't know, it just doesn't really bother me anymore. I'm just kind of used to it. Um, some people are really annoyed by it still, and they think that she's just spiraling downwards in quality over the years. And look, I could talk on and on about how I do feel that Madonna peaked with Ray of Light and music. I do understand also and appreciate that in the 80s with Like a Prayer and True Blue, she was really at her prime. There were, there were peaks and valleys throughout her career. 
Um, confessions on a dance floor in American Life were strong moments as well. She was kind of riding this kind of experimental wave. And then around 2007, she decided to get very mainstream again. Um, I will say this. I think that this is her strongest lead single since Four Minutes, which was her collaboration with Justin Timberlake. Um, her last two albums, as far as the lead singles are concerned, well, you probably, if anyone follows my channel, know how I feel about MDNA and her lead single from that record. MDNA is definitely her worst record. And I think maybe people just seem to forget it exists when they talk about some of her other songs, but I'm just like, but remember, MDNA is worse. <laughs> she can't get worse than MDNA, right? That's my hope. I'm not saying that every single song off that record is terrible, by the way. I just think that the majority are. It's the worst album if you look at all of her records. But that's my opinion, of course, subjective here. Uh, Rebel Heart was a step in the right direction, but I gotta be honest, Rebel Heart felt very hollow in its EDM production. You know, it was it was very Kanye West. It was It was very, like, dubstep continuation in some ways of what we were getting with MDNA. Uh, but I didn't really feel like instrumentally like it was progressing there were a few moments where i think she was experimenting more now she's come into this sort of edgier territory which is very ethnic and i think she has been living overseas in portugal for the last few years has a lot to do with the fact that she's really trying to she's not really saying like i want to be in the u.s markets anymore like she's just like i'm more popular in europe and in latin america anyway so why would i even bother to try and make what the big artists in America are, are, are sounding like, which it definitely felt like with MDNA, with Hard Candy, with Rebel Heart, that's what she was chasing after. Um, but she was always a little behind the trends on those records. Um, whereas this album, it still may feel like she's chasing a trend. Maybe it feels like she's chasing mumble rap, reggaeton, Latin rap. Uh, and that seems to have been sweeping the airwaves in the last few years. Um, think of J Balvin and Daddy Yankee. I hate those latin rappers i think they're absolute trash i'm sorry but i'm so glad she did not collaborate with them and she chose maluma maluma is another you know he's a higher caliber artist in my opinion i'm not that familiar with his work i only know really the stuff he's done with shakira but he's had a lot of success with shakira they're a great pairing people say that they don't have a lot of chemistry on this record with madonna and maluma I don't know. I think they play off of each other. Interestingly, I like how he sort of brings out the Spanish sort of echo to her English lyric. I like how that's constructed. Um, you know, he gets equal status on the song. They're both kind of balanced out. He gets a lot of time to rap. And I have to confess, I have not translated all the lyrics. So uh, I don't feel like I need to. It's one of those songs where I'm not necessarily looking for deep meaning. Um, but I will just say this, I'll cut to the chase. This song is infectious. This song has a vibe. This song is dance, but it's a more dance hall Caribbean flair of dance. It is a bit reggaeton. People don't like reggaeton sometimes and they really, you know, it's a personal preference. You know, you either love it or you hate it. And I see this experimental edginess coming through in the production. It's a, it's a left field song. It's not doing what you think it's gonna do. I love the cha-chas. It is a little bit ASMR as I heard one reviewer point out, um, but I don't think it's cringy. I think if we talk about the concept, Madonna's talked about this character of Madame X being all of these different things. And one of them is a cha-cha instructor. Uh, so I think that's the character that she's embodying for this song. I can, I would imagine each other's song will be embodying a different character. So I'm very interested to hear what a song inspired by Madame X as a head of state or a housekeeper or an equestrian or a cabaret singer will sound like. Um, and don't get me wrong. I definitely think the best is yet to come. Obviously, this is just an appetizer. This isn't the full meal. This isn't even meant to be like that big moment on the record. It's just getting our feet wet in the ocean for the first time, listening to the beginning of this record as it is at the beginning. So you can't really judge this yet by its cover. It could, I, I really hope that this album is stronger than even Medellin, because I mean, I don't think by far Medellin is the strongest or most legendary song by any means. I may sound like I'm giving it praise, but I can also give it some criticism. I understand where people are coming from. They don't like, you know, the lazy sort of Latin mumble rapping. They don't like the lack of chemistry. They don't think it's that well constructed. They think the song's a little chaotic. They also point out some of the cheesiness in the lyrics. There is one lyric Madonna sings where she sings, we made a cartel for our love. Yeah. Now I'll admit that that is a cringy lyric. Um, she's obviously trying to tie in Colombian 
culture and history and it's just trying a little too hard uh to make this sort of metaphor that doesn't that sounds like it's trying to be witty but it's just like don't don't do that don't try that hard uh and especially when the lyrics are very prominent and point in that moment where the song where it's just very spaced out in the production that that makes it very you know like what you're paying attention to and so that's where the song does kind of fall flat um, I really can't wait to see the music video because I think the music video is, it's kind of a song like Beyonce's music. A lot of Beyonce's more recent music, I think works best when you pair it with a music video. They're, it's visual music. Um, and I can see this song fitting better with a visual, uh, for most people. Um, I think the visual could only help it. I don't think it could hurt it though. I could see how it might. Um, so I'm really excited and looking forward to that, but I definitely, uh, think that this is a visual song and I don't know, it's, it's not a deep song. And so there's not that much more I can say other than I do think it has growing appeal. Um, I do think it's has some staying power and I think it's actually a lot stronger than some of her, like I said, lead singles of late, give me all your loving was very throwaway and very cheesy, very try hard. Um, and generic. And at least this song has the edgy factor. I, I gotta admit, it's 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 catchy in a weird way. Um, it, it's not catchy, but it is. It still has a way of getting stuck in your head. Um, and I do think it just has this unique atmosphere that it really does feel like a dizzying Colombian sex dream. Um, and I don't know, maybe it's just where my head is at recently with the turning of the seasons and my relationship status that I'm just kind of feeling very... Uh, <laughs> feverish with uh, that kind of energy, that kind of sexual frustration. So maybe that's why the song is speaking to me a little more than it might have at other points in my life. I don't know. But this song, it has a, uh, I can't deny, it has an infectious quality. So I'm definitely not going to be uh, turning away from it. I don't know what you may think. Uh, let me know in the comments, uh, people, what do you think? Madonna fans, are you loving this new track? Do you think it's a return to form? Do you like that it's more experimental? Do you think it's absolute trash? Um, what are you, are you, what are you excited for in the album? What song titles are you the most excited for? I must admit, I'm very intrigued by the track listing. Some of those song titles definitely prefer the standard edition album cover. It definitely has me intrigued. I'll be honest. I'm the most intrigued. I think I've been for a new Madonna album, uh, in a couple album cycles for sure. Um, because a rebel heart just conceptually felt like it was trying so hard, but if you listen to the record, I don't really feel a concept behind it. It just feels kind of like hollow electronic music, most of it. And it doesn't really stand the test of time. I don't think it really aged very well. Um, and then of course, you know how I feel about MDNA. So that means we're going back at least 10 years before Madonna seems to be really, you know, doing something for me. So maybe this is that final return, you know, that she's been, that I think she needs. She's 60 years old, you know, it's time for her to I don't like using the word act her age because at the same time, I love that she's still, as she sings in the song, I went back to my 17th year. It's nostalgia. It's it's wanting to be young and free. And I don't blame her for wanting to channel that. And she pulls it off. She looks great and she can channel all these different characters and she can bring that youthful, vivacious energy. I mean, it's Latin America for crying out loud. That's just, it's known for being perpetually young and feisty, like a culture, you know? Uh, so she's not going to pipe that part down of her personality, but I also think that this album is going to bring an elegance that I don't think we've seen from her in a little while, and I'm really excited to tap into that. And if anything, by the character she's pursue personifying, I think she's going to play through with that more kind of wizened, older lady persona a little bit more, finally, and get to that stage, because she hasn't really delved into those waters yet. Um, she still kind of acts like she's in her 30s, so or even 20s. So uh, I'll be very interested to see how this Madame X character grows. And I'm very excited for the record. So let me know what you think in the, uh, in the comments. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you did enjoy. I'll link some Madonna reviews I have on this channel in the description. And check those out if you'd like. Thank you all so much for watching. Peace, love and light. Bye.